Is it morning where you are? Oh, yes, it's still 11. Okay, good, good. <laughs> I never know a question um, pro. Everyone's different. I know. Well, it looks like it's nighttime outside because of the ice storm coming in. But nevertheless, here we are. The first office hours of 2023. Oh, is it? I didn't know that. I should know that. <laughs> I feel like I see these all the time. Yeah, only once a month, technically. Okay. Um, everyone, thank you for joining us for Question Pro Office Hours. I am your host, Crystal Weiss, and this is our whoop, um, guest today, <laughs> um, Nick Freiling, who is usually very, very into Insights Hub. So if you do have any questions about Insight Repositories, he's your guy to talk to. But today... He's coming with me on the essentials journey. I love, I love uh, the, I'm always about the essentials. Yeah. <laughs> I did spend a lot of time building surveys before question pro, I mean, six, seven years, almost every day. So I have a lot of thoughts. If I talk, <laughs> if I talk too much, just shut me up. Um, that's why I brought you because while I do love question pro, I am not a survey expert. I'm just like a survey enthusiast. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good <laughs> if enough. There, if there is such a thing as a survey enthusiast, I think I would be that person. Um, we did use it for, I'm convinced that I'm going to use it for our next family vacation to do homework on where we should go. Oh, good idea. Yeah. As because long then as you we get could to also, pick all the options. Yes. And then I was going to make Adrian Mendez from the customer success team. He doesn't know this yet. He'll find out watching this. I was going to have him help me figure out how to do a ranking so that, like, as we, like, pick the most popular, essentially like rank order voting <laughs> as we like go through, then we can get the most popular and then nobody you, will complain. Well, also no one would have to know if you had him make it so your thing wins no matter what. Oh no, I wouldn't do that. I'm a fair family organizer. Okay, good. <laughs> um, I even do things I don't want to do in lieu of like <clears throat> the larger good. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. No, I get that. <laughs> Um, okay, Nick, where are you based out of? You said it's not, it's not, um, morning there. No, it's afternoon. It's 1206, uh, Jacksonville, Florida. So mm -hmm. I, th I think I'm one of like two people on the East coast, believe it or not at question pro mm -hmm. that I know of. Maybe some of the Canadians. Uh, I think they're, I don't know. I don't know. They're all, I, I don't, <laughs> Canada is like a big, it's just like a big blur to me. They're all in, I don't really know where they are. I they're don't even Canada know somewhere. who else is on the East. Oh, Mark from the CX team. Okay, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's it. What that's people don't realize is that, yeah, pe people don't realize that the East Coast is, is uh, or the West, like part of Florida is in uh, Central Time. I don't know if you knew that. A, a good chunk of Florida is in Central Time. And then, like, it kind of goes up. Like, East Coast is pretty, pretty uh, close up just to the coast. I know oh. there's a lot of cities, but um, if I go like two hours west of me driving, I'm in, I'm in Central Time. Central Time is the best time zone. It's that's huge. Awesome. It's huge. <laughs> um, Pacific time is the worst time zone. Yeah. Everyone's like done with their day by the time you wake up. Yeah. And, or you have to wake up really early. I don't move my meetings when I go to West, like specific time because I don't think mm -hmm. that's fair. And so I'm up at like 5 a.m. for meetings. Uh, I did a town hall during Christmas at bright and early at 7 a.m. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. That's too early for me. Like Not for me. Not for me. But if you want to let us know where you're from in the comments, I'm based in Austin, Texas. Nick, like he said, is in Jackson. Man, I keep forgetting which side you're on. <laughs> Jacksonville, Florida. And we also usually have, you know, as if you've joined us for office hours before, we have Adrian Mendez, the head of our customer success team. He's based in India. We have, you know, a lot of people on the West Coast. So wherever you are, we are. And we are always there to help with your survey needs. But let's get started. Because it's January, so we're going to talk about essentials. If you've been with us on this, you know, journey of Question Pro office hours for a couple of years now, you know we always start the year with essentials because it's essential. <laughs> and some would argue that it is the best free survey software on the market. Um, Nick, what a, you've worked with a lot of survey softwares over the years. We don't like to be biased here, but we are, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, what do you think makes Question Pro Essentials different from other free survey softwares? Um, just the attention to detail, like when you're programming surveys day after day after day, sometimes it's like the tiniest, tiniest little features that end up saving you hours over the course of like weeks or months. Um, 
you will find like deep in the dark corners of question pros <laughs> features that like make your life dramatically easier that like somebody and I know because now I'm on the inside, I know like how that works. Like someone brings up an idea, you know, really fights for it, finds a customer that says they love it. We implement it, even if it's not like a big, you know, to do about the, the feature, it can like save a ton of time. So yeah, I mean I think it's just super feature rich. It's little stuff sometimes that um can make the biggest difference, but really enterprise focused. And I think especially for like pros, like I was doing surveys every day, um, you know, saving like half an hour a day adds up quick. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh, that's the agenda. Oh, this is very, as you can tell, I did not build the slide deck. So <laughs> um, we are the leading survey software. Um, that's And if you didn't know, we have multiple survey offerings. Um, what Nick was, what I was talking about earlier with Nick, which is Insights Hub actually sits under our research suite, but we also have a CX suite and a workforce suite. So whether you're looking for insights into your customers, your employees, or your, you know, your, I don't know, products, we literally have an entire platform that is integrated, which I don't think a lot of people know, mm -hmm. that can help you. What do you think is like the the worst or the best kept secret that shouldn't be a secret about the question pro platform. Oh man. I, I have to think about that. I mean, <laughs> just what, just what you said about it being all these different features. I think like teams I'll see, they don't know. They don't think they're going to need these other features, but like suddenly you do a survey, you're like, man, I wish we could survey these people again. It's like, well, that's a community product. And it's like, you know, it's some teams, they already have that. They don't even know they have it. So yeah, um, yeah I think best kept secret. I'm gonna have to think about that though. It's a good question. Uh, thanks, that's my job. <laughs> there, shouldn't be any, there shouldn't be any secrets though, is the thing. Uh, that's, well, yes, but there is definitely, I would say we, you know, as a company, and this is, you know, a big goal for marketing this year, is going to be working in like on the narrative of like, we literally can solve everything you need, which sounds so like whatever, but it's like, yes, we can. Well, <laughs> I, we don't have to be the devil, you know, like a Salesforce. We can be like this, like a HubSpot, like a product you're mm -hmm. really excited about. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Well, it is modular. I mean, you know, it's not like you buy into the whole thing at once if you don't need it. Um, it grows with you. But I think uh, especially I worked at an agency before this and it gets tough, like mapping data from app to app to app to app. Um, yeah. So I know like the whole ecosystem, like it's an ecosystem. I think question of an ecosystem, um, yeah. a research ecosystem. It makes it a lot easier. You know, there's like, you know, I, I remember being like lured in by some cool ad and I would buy that app. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I got to, you know, I have like 14 passwords to get like across all this data. It's not like that at Question Pro. Yeah, I was doing my taxes today or yesterday. And that oh, was good. like, I don't, thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had to like remember all my passwords to like log into every app to like get them to integrate. I was like, this is not great. Yeah. Um, okay, essentials. How do we get start? Look at this guy casually doing a <laughs> survey and a beanbag. It looks really uncomfortable actually, the way he's sitting. <laughs> I was like, I would never. It makes me want to sit up straighter. <laughs> yeah, what do you, I mean, he's looking at a question for a dashboard. Um, I just like don't have the, I don't like bad posture. It hurts my back. Yeah, it makes me, it makes me fix my posture. I, I, maybe I appreciate it for that reason. <laughs> um, okay. So when you're creating a new survey, what are, I think the hardest point of like part of creating a new survey is coming up with the questions. Mm -hmm. But as a survey professional, what do you think is the hardest part? I mean, yeah, it's easy to kind of go down rabbit trails. You get caught up in one idea. There's there's a lot of options. Like you open up the question pro kind of question type container. There's like, I don't know how many question types we have. I should know that. There's dozens and dozens. <laughs> and so like you see this, you see that, you see this, and you're kind of like, you built out a survey. It's not what you necessarily sat down to try to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, picking like really just optimizing, like you said, the questions, the question types, um, that, that's the, that really makes or breaks the survey. Uh, what are, if you were, I was once... A, a wee little question proer in 2019. And mm. I use multiple choice questions for everything. And then I got told that I should not be doing that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what is your like go-to question type for building like your basic service? Yeah, I mean, obviously multiple choice is big, but ranking is one that can often replace like a good multiple choice. Cause I think mm. people think of server, they think multiple choice. Um, Right. I don't even think they're a lot of times their brains go to like, this is, you know, I want to see how these rank. Like the first thing you're like, I just want to know which people like best. So you say, which one do you like this one or that one? Um, but Hey, that can be a ranking question. And if you find out like the number one spot 
is like different for everybody, but the number two is the same for everybody. That's like a huge finding. And you'd have no idea if that would, you know, that that was the case if you didn't have a rank. Oh. So I'm all about the rankings. Um, but I do, I do think it's better to stick to the basics until you really understand what it is you're doing, uh, what you're trying to learn. Um, and then kind of, you'd really be real careful about which question types you're using. But I, I don't think there's a question type that I've ever thought about that question pro doesn't have. <laughs> question type there we go. There we go. That's some good. of them I haven't even thought of and I still haven't figured out a way to use them. <laughs> do, you, do you have a least liked question type? I mean, matrix questions are really important, but sometimes I just, the big pet peeve is I see like, you know, there's like 400 dots on the screen because you've asked like 40 rows and there's like eight columns. So people just miss, I guess, abuse it a lot. I don't know. So that's probably, <laughs> this is a pet peeve. <laughs> I love that. Um, okay. So if we're talking about our difference between our two product lines because we are we are going to be doing some demos nick's going to kind of walk us through like how to add a logo and like how to import some questions um through a survey template what i did want to make sure people knew is that question types what nick was commenting about is like we have ton we we have all the question types but not all of them are available in essentials and so working on your advanced team or research edition will allow you to do kind of like the heat map, the hot spot, the Van Westerndorp, the rank order, the, you know, pricing analysis, even, you know, those are really um, the qual and, qual, qual and quant kind of analysis you really need the advanced team and research for. Our essentials, while it is full service, really does keep you on that basic analysis side and basic question type that Nick and I were just talking there's nothing wrong with multiple choice. I know that I make fun of it a lot, mm -hmm. but there is technically nothing wrong with it. No, you could technically do any, I always say like you could, you could ask 10 multiple choices or you can ask like one good matrix question or something like that. So mm -hmm. it's just kind of the long way around. There we go. Um, and you know, some of the basic question types, we're literally just going through this ordering text, image chooser, matrix, miscellaneous, um, you know, and then, survey templates. This slide deck we'll make available to everyone. You know, we like to stick them together just so people know the different things that are available. Um, and we have over 350 survey templates. We literally add probably between our four marketing teams, we probably, you know, workforce, CX, research and surveys, we probably add, they each add a template a week. Mm -hmm. So, or update. So like we're always updating for what's like trending and what, you know, um, most popular, um, a couple of weeks ago, we ran a report and, um, a student bully survey template was the most popular. And I oh, thought yes. <laughs> it was a good template though. And these templates are customizable just so everyone knows. I mean, you can download them, change them up. So like a lot yeah. of times I think that'll get you like 90% of the way mm -hmm. and save you a ton of time. Yes. And it imports straight into your account, which I love. You don't have to like copy and paste the questions and the answers. That's the worst part. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll go through that in just a second. So actually, Nick, you want to share your screen and we can dive into some Question Pro Essential Basics? Can do. Boop, boop, boop. And I'll find the questions too that people submitted and we can start on those. Um, we'll have to keep those up because I got to hide them when I share my screen. So yeah, I got them on my, um, do, do, do. Ooh, there's a good one about language settings. Ooh, and logic settings. Mm. Entire screen. Here we go. Here we go. You ready? I'm going to add it to the stream. Bam. Is it the right one? Is it the right one? Yes. Okay, great. Nick, do you not have two monitors? Oh, I do. Okay, good. Yeah, I, do. <laughs> I was like, don't exit out of that stream yard or you'll leave. The oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay, everybody, here we are. If you have never seen Question Pro Essentials, this is, this is it. Here you are. Um, and you can sign up literally directly from our homepage. You can use single sign-on so you can sign up with Microsoft and Google and LinkedIn, I think. I don't know. I, we used to at least. <laughs> I've, I've never logged into LinkedIn to so anything. you can use single sign-up. As you can see, uh, Nick and I, sometimes I think, you know, these are so good because they also bring us down to like 
making sure that we can do the basics and not thinking too complicated about things. But if you're in here, why don't we start with making a survey from a template? From a template? From a template. A template. You have to, which template we're going to use? Or use a template right there. Just use the drop down. <laughs> Oh, use a template. Here we go. Yes, I, I don't use. I'm, I built mine from scratch. So Woo! no, we gotta use a template. Um, let's. Try... I like these ones here, if you don't mind. What? Okay. Industry specific. I think that's kind of. A, I, I at least encountered that a lot as an when I worked in an agency where people would come to me with templates, and it, it there can be some nuances that even as like a researcher, you don't even know. You know a part of an industry, like some of the language they use mm -hmm. you know, in the travel, like your travel agent. I, I don't actually know how many travel agents there still are. Maybe there are, but um, just vocabulary that like, I have no idea, even as a researcher, but the, the, the user knows exactly what they're talking about. So great. That's true. That is true. Restaurant dining habits. Restaurant. Man, there's a lot. I don't know. I, it's too many to pick from. Okay, why don't you just? I like that because I've I've been to a restaurant before, so I. Should, I, should. <laughs> I have been to a restaurant. Okay, so here you can see all the. This is eleven questions long. You can see what they are, and then you can either cancel or if you can click use this template. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. I'm going to use this because I want to convert one of these question types. So great. <laughs> Nick is very serious about his surveys. Oh, yeah, believe me. <laughs> uh, survey was created successfully. Oh, you're in admin, so you will we'll also get some sneak peeks into some beta features that are happening. In oh, the yeah, yes. Process. I see that right there. That's a good teaser, I guess, right? <laughs> uh, we'll probably do an office hours about it, to be honest. Um, and so here you are. Um, so you can see that it, it into your system, it adds all the questions automatically. It puts them in blocks automatically. And we're just going to start from the top by adding a logo um, because adding a logo and customizing your surveys for your users is super important to make sure what you have, they have to know where the survey is coming from mm -hmm. because if they think it's spam or they think it's like a trick, they're less likely to answer your survey. Branding is the most basic feature that we have and way to, to connect with your customers. So if you click on add a logo. Mm -hmm. So it will pull up. <gasps> I'm going to add sense. this. Yes. <laughs> I have this. Uh, I don't know if we can use some other company's logo. Let me see. That's here. fine. All right. I'm going to use this pizza. There's these actually these two pizza. I actually like the old one better. I don't know about you. but mm, It looks like a little hat. That's what I like about it. Like hat. So <laughs> uh, but yeah, logos build trust big time. Um, and it's it, consumers for better or worse. Wow, that's big. They get a lot of surveys. Yeah, I'll resize. They get a lot of surveys. And so, you know, the more trust you can build, the better. So they don't, they don't X out, don't skip it. But you can drag this. And it's, I love that you can do this right on this screen. You don't have to go to some other screen to design, resize, okay. move, et cetera. It's all right here, as simple as can be, I think. Uh, I'll actually make it a little smaller. Um, so there we go. Pizza Hut, old logo. Bam. Oh, um, dining okay. habits. What's this? <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Restaurant, Pizza Hut. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, okay. So now if you go up to design um, mm -hmm. up on the left-hand side of your workspace, this is where you can also change the colors of your survey. So mm -hmm. we want to make them match the Pizza Hut branding. So what I'm going to do, I think under custom theme, there's a lot of different ways to do this. One of these might work for this because it's just red and black. Okay. So let me see. Let me see red. Let's see what that looks like. It probably will look fine. Yeah, it looks good to me. Yeah. Um, if you need exact custom like hex colors, which I know at, at, at Question Pro, Crystal is the brand uh, gatekeeper. So you have to use the exact colors. But you can just drag it here. I like yeah. to say if it's close enough, it's good enough. But that's not that may not be your uh, the way your organization works. Absolutely so not. <laughs> <laughs> well, this looks good enough for me. Um, you know, and then also you can change your fog family. This makes a great point. Get the brand guidelines from your marketing team and you can save them as a yes. theme in here. So see if you click down, you can actually save multiple themes. So you could save it. Let's say you have multiple product lines or. Mm -hmm. You could save different, you could save a workforce theme, a research theme, and a CX theme in here for, so when you're distributing those, or, you know, a Pizza Hut, a Papa John's, and a uh, 
Papa Murphy's. There we go. So many Papas and pizza. <laughs> That's um, a good point. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so here's where you could say that you can save multiple themes and then you can just go back and apply them. Mm -hmm. So when you okay. save a theme, I, I, does it show up over here? I can't remember. I think it shows up on this page. Um, and you just get to, you know, anytime you need it, you just apply it, font, sizing, colors, spacing, everything applied automatically. Yeah, it's great. Perfect. Um, this is also where you find accessibility settings. And you can see even within our uh, free edition, we have accessibility options. So whether it's a bigger font, whether it's readability or um, making sure that there is the different dynamics as far as uh, accessibility is concerned. I know that our entire UX team actually spends a lot of time on accessibility, making sure that surveys are um, accessible to everyone, um, which is really important, making sure that you're getting the right kind of survey respondents, act like a true cross section and not just like those one people that were available at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, so accessibility themes, very important. Okay, we've added a logo. We've changed the colors. We imported questions. What's next? Um, let's see. I mean, so what? the reason I picked this, this template is because I saw this question here. Um, as a researcher, so I would want to know, yes, multiple choice, that's good, because it's not always one thing that prompts someone to dine somewhere. So I mentioned before, turning multiple choice into ranking questions. So if they selected, you know, more than one of these, I'd want to see which one was most important to them. So mm. um, you can change the question. In this case, I would probably want to uh, copy the question. It's just done from the screen, puts it right below. Same question here, same question here. Um, just don't forget, sometimes I used to forget that I would do this. My respondents would answer the same question twice. <laughs> if I forget that you did that. But... <laughs> Um, all the settings th to change a question, question type, et cetera, are all on the right side of the screen. Just click settings. Um, yeah. It shows up in this column. Um, you can change the question type. Let me see. Actually, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to change this to a ranking from here. I might have to create a new question. Kind of depends on, you can't always change one question type to another. If you have a matrix, for example, um, it's got columns and rows. If you change it to a multiple choice, we don't know what to do with the columns and rows, which ones you wanted to keep. So I think actually I'm, I'm, oh, I was mistaken. But I see. But yes. that's really, that's interesting though. So you could change, that's really interesting. Yeah, you can change, I mean, you can change a lot about the way this particular question looks. Yeah. Um, display order, uh, ascending, descending. Um, and then if I want to change this to single select, radio, checkbox, right. drop Oh, and down. you can add columns though too on C and vertical. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fun. So you can make it like look skinnier. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Does, if you change, if you add in columns though, that way, does it change how a respondent views the rank of them? Um, it depends on if you randomize the order of the questions, which you can also do here. So, so answer display order. I do this a lot, um, random so that you're not, cause people kind of tend to, you know, they, they read top down. Yeah. I don't know if you read that's I read top down, left to right. And, um, if you, uh, they kind of just tend to select the ones first. And then if they've selected a bunch, respondents will sometimes just kind of move on to the next question. So it's best to, to randomize the order of the questions, unless it's obviously like a scale. You know, you don't want to randomize the order of a scale. But um, right. randomize them. They'll show up in random order. This one will not. So the other one will at the bottom. Yes, per respondent. Um, okay. So it kind of eliminates all that bias. But um, mm -hmm. what I was going to do is add, so I'm going to add a, um, a ranking question here, rank order. There's also drag and drop ranking. Um, so I'm just going to do this from scratch since I couldn't copy that question and change it to a rank. Um, what prompted you? I'm not going to take too long on this, but what, what prompted you to dine with us? Let's say I wanted to, you know, I wanted to know which of these was most important, not just which one. So it was, you know, location, convenience, past experience, et cetera, et cetera. And then the way that they engage with that question, you can view here, just click preview. Um, you can see, can you still see that window? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Um, and you can just test the question type oh, out here, see if you like it. That's fun. I love being able, people love something we've learned in marketing and, you know, just existence of in the marketing world. So people love clicking things. They love it. Yeah. Well, and, and, and it's, it, I think it's more intuitive, you know, like we have that rank order question type, which works, but you type in like number one, number two, number three. And this one, like people don't always know, like you might drag it this, you might take a look at it. You'd be like, oh, I think actually this way, you know, and it's like, yeah. you kind of get to do, kind of get to express that in the survey, you know, um, 
in a little bit, I think, more of a... And look how nice that branding looks. And then you can also see what it's going to preview on desktop, um, mm -hmm. tablet, and phone, mobile, which is great. See, then you're going to move down like that. And this really helps. You know, we know that a lot of survey respondents are mobile first. And so really thinking about how you're framing your survey in a mobile first world is definitely priority. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Um, okay. So now we've imported a question. We've imported a survey template. We've changed the branding. We edited a question type. We added a question type. Um, what do we do next? How long should um, a survey be? Yeah, it's it depends on the use case. If, if, if these are people that, that are used to hearing from you, let's say it's like a monthly, you know, maybe you're doing an employee feedback survey that they have to complete the whole thing. You know, it could be as long as you want, of course. But uh, usually what I say for like market research or for kind of, you know, exploratory surveys, you kind of hit a wall of survey fatigue. Um, after I, I usually say like 20 to 25 questions. I know that sounds like a lot, but people can get through, you know, when the, when the platform's designed well, like, like question pro is people can get through these questions quickly. It's, you know, it should be as easy as like read question, look at answer, touch answer question proceeds to the next question. So, right. um, 20 to 25, that's like, you know, maybe four or five or six minutes for a respondent. Um, but ideally mixing and matching the question types is, is, is is best so that if it's like multiple choice all the way through, even if they're easy to answer, it just gets boring for respondents. Mix and match the question types, open-ended to closed-ended. Um, it helps with survey fatigue a lot. So, um, you know, all um, these question types, you make use of them, you know, when it makes sense. For sure. Another way to um, help with survey fatigue is logic, right? Is like creating logic patterns exactly. in surveys. What yes. Um, can you walk us through the uh, walk us through the logic basics of you know doing a survey? Yeah, so if I let's say I'm I'm fielding a survey, uh, let's say I have a new product idea, and I'm interested to see how males and females differ in the way that they respond to the idea. Um, okay. Kind of the old fashioned ways you would say, you know, if you are male, you know, an uh, answer this question. Um, if not, skip to the next question. And the next one would be like, you know, if you're feeling, I mean, that's, that's, I say old fashioned, that's really way back. That's before there was survey logic at all. So um, what I would, cons what I would suggest is, is always think about like the possible ways you want to segment this data later on. If you're definitely going to look at the way males versus females differ, um, then, then ask some questions in survey that are relevant to each of those two demographics or whether it's age, whatever it is. Um, so the way you would do that is, um, let me see, add, remember this, add, uh, so if I have like, I'm going to use a, um, a question like this. So let's say I'm interested in, in seeing how people who visit a restaurant daily, who go every day to a restaurant versus mm -hmm. people that go once every six months, how they differ um, in, their, in their thoughts about you know, my product or something like that. So okay. I'm going to add a question here. Um, and I'm going to ask this question only to people that visit daily. So um, I'm not even going to, I'm just going to type in. So the question. I was trying to think of what's something that I visit. What restaurant do I visit daily? Starbucks. But less Starbucks, daily, yeah. I don't live near a drive through uh, Well, maybe that's a good thing. Um, honestly, it's your, uh, my pay, my, like my uh, paycheck and my pocketbook are actually quite thankful for the move. I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless you just start making the long drive every day now, then it's not a good. Then it's not uh, a good no, thing. there is a, there's one close, but I have to go inside. Oh, um, awful. so I can't listen to my podcast. I had a whole routine where I like sat in the drive through line and listened to a podcast. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. And, well, and, and if it's like if it's like 100 degrees out, I live in Florida, you live in Texas. Sometimes it's like eight in the morning, it's like 100 degrees. Just I don't want to go outside yet, you know. I just don't want to do it. Not ready to start um, sweating at 8 a.m. in the morning. But, anyways, <laughs> this is a question, whatever question you want. If you're like, I want to ask a question to people who visit a restaurant daily, um, you ask that question here. You don't want people to see it who don't visit daily. Um, click logic. There's a few different ways you can do this. I would suggest this one using display, what's called display logic. So, um, show hide question. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to actually, what I'm going to do is hide the question by default. It doesn't matter too much in this case. Um, and I'm going to enable on page logic for now. Um, so if, if they said to this question, how frequently do they go out to eat and they select daily, if criteria is met, show this question, click save. Ooh. This question is only shown to people that answer the previous question. 
um, correctly or in you the know, way I that think this them. happens to me. I was taking a survey for FabFitFun, which is like a bot subscription. And mm -hmm. the survey said that I was like 33% through, but I was 33% through for like five questions because I think it kept yes. to me. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. I think the question, like, I think the survey kept getting longer as I was <laughs> Yeah, it kept adding, yeah, it kept adding questions for you. And I'm just like, wait. You're probably like their target, exact target audience. So like, we got to ask this girl as many questions. Yeah, and then at the end, can. I was like, you should, never mind. I won't say that. I was like, at the end, I was like, you should not be using Qualtrics. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that you was... can hide the, because because it is tough. I mean, it's it's impossible to estimate how someone's going to answer questions in the future. I think, if I'm not mistaken, in Question Pro, you can hide the progress bar. Is that true? Yes, there is an option. This. So if you go up to progress bar, um, none. you can there do you go. none. Yeah, yeah, so then that won't happen to your survey respondents. Correct. It's usually but... not necessary unless you have like a really <laughs> complicated usually... survey. And it's also something that helps with survey fatigue. Is yes. like people knowing when the end is coming, but if mm -hmm. you trap them in an endless cycle of questions, <laughs> yes. then they're going to drop out. Yeah, <laughs> I know there was like there's been a couple where I am the target demographic and I abandon them. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'll even put sometimes in the open ended question, be like, I am sorry, I'm not, I did not complete this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like you got real far. I remember back. This is like almost a decade ago. You'd be like 95% of the way through, and then you'd answer one of the last questions a certain way. It would jump you back to like 15%. Excuse me. So, <laughs> yeah, it used to happen. <laughs> um, but survey logic is a really good way to help with that fatigue so you can skip people ahead or like back so they don't have to answer to Nick's point, like not applicable over and over again mm -hmm. because that makes them tired too. Exactly. Exactly. And there's a lot of different logic you can apply to a, a question. Um, I, it's not even worth trying to go through all of it, but just, just real quickly, let's see, I actually have to add a new, not new criteria. I'm going to reset the logic and pull Ooh. up that entire logic set back up on the screen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, skip logic, compound branching, show hide options. You can hide individual options to a question. Um, and then these get really, I mean, JavaScript logic gets really, it's way beyond me. So uh, <laughs> this gets really complicated. Probably I'm not the person to go through all that. Uh, that's when we bring on the big guns like Adrian or Dan. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, there is some, like something that I've talked about a lot is making sure if you're not using a survey template, write your questions and the logic out ahead of time. Like use a Google Doc or a Word Doc mm -hmm. to think through all of this ahead of time because you will get like you might get choice fatigue even setting up the survey. Mm -hmm. And so to make sure that you have everything proofed, we do this with our you know marketing email campaigns. I make sure everyone writes everything. Nick's actually suffered from my like, you have to do this. <laughs> like we have to write everything out ahead of time and have it proofed, especially by like a peer to make sure mm -hmm. that you're not just like in a, a self loop. Yes. The best way to describe it is write your questions and your logic out ahead of time because you could get very overwhelmed quickly. Yes. Yeah, self loop. I like, I feel like I do that in a lot of areas of my life <laughs> by accident. I'm going to use that word more. Like I just, you just get st like stuck in like your own loop of, chaos. Well, it's like you set out to do something and then hours later, you're like, why haven't I done this yet? <laughs> but you've worked for hours and it's just not done. Um, that is, de so definitely um, use, you know, a system. And I know we have an import option for some things, but I don't, don't know where it is and I've never used it, but I know it's there. To import oh. questions? Yes. Yes, there is. And I, I use it all the time. It's like a muscle memory thing. Oh, great. Uh, let's see here. You have to basically you have to format your questions a certain way right. on a on a Word doc or a notepad um, exactly that way and, and question will read that convert it into these kinds these kinds of questions. That's so fun. Yes, I, the only way I know how to do that actually is from the beginning of when you when you first create a survey. Oh. There's a button that says import. I don't know how to. We're do too it. far down the loop. Yeah, it's too late. <laughs> that ship has sailed. <laughs> We're too far. Okay, abort. The ship is gone. The ship is gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we've done survey logic, and now you're getting ready to distribute. You want to do some finishing options. So let's say they've done. And when we say finish options, that's definitely probably something that I realize may be an us thing or an industry term. And mm -hmm. when we mean finish options, 
we just mean like thank you pages, links, images, you know, kind of like all the things to make it look snazzy. Yeah. Just respond to the experience. It does matter, especially if you're putting your brand on it. Um, you can say whatever you'd like here. Shorter the better. I mean, a lot of respondents just want to be done when it's yeah. done. But um, sometimes I've seen people leave links in here. Um, they'll leave, you know, they'll direct somebody to, you know, maybe like a coupon page or something. If it's like mm -hmm. a brand, if it's an, in, you know, a customer survey, something like that. But this is a full, you know, full on editor. So you can do whatever you'd like. And there's also another option where you can, when they complete it, you can re, if you go to finish options. Mm-hmm. You can reroute them to another page. You yes. can um, do, you could forward to a friend. You can, if you're in our rewards or communities, you can do panels, right? Where we were talking about earlier, where you could join a community of other like-minded restaurant individuals. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then this is definitely where you can do that. And to Nick's point, add the branding because I'm not going to lie, people forget what they're answering questions for. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's definitely true. We even see that at Question Pro when we send out our surveys. People be like, I don't use Question Pro. And I'll be like, I see that you're making surveys in your account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. I don't know what survey software you're using. <laughs> yeah, they're, paying, they're paying for two. Maybe. <laughs> Like, um, and so <clears throat> this is definitely where you can reinforce that. You also have access to different languages. Which um, is, uh, you mean to convert you to translate the entire survey? Yes. Yes. It's here. And I'm pretty sure the way this works is it will, it will auto translate most of the survey for you. Is that correct? I think so. It is. <laughs> <laughs> The rhetorical question. <laughs> I'm the audience. I know that what happens though, and, and as anyone who works in translations at all will tell you, some of it, there are some, I, ideally you have somebody that can review it, um, especially if you're like using industry specific language, but uh, let's select, I think French probably usually translates pretty well. I think it's some of the more complicated ones where some of the words, it's good to have another set of eyes, but um, it the will translate. The only know how to do is Latin. Oh, wow. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's rare, I think. <laughs> Yeah, eight years. Um, That's impressive. No. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It is. I don't know actually what this is. This Git quote is the Git custom translation, I think. Yeah, we have a, the audience team, I mm -hmm. believe. Yes. And then auto translate is where I said it will do most of this for you. Yes. Um, I think, like I, I said, if you're pretty safe, like English to French, I'm pretty sure. If it's something kind of unique, um, this works to get you. I think this will get you like 90% of the way, but it's still good to have someone else look at it. <laughs> Again, Having that peer review is always a good, making sure you're sending out test surveys, and we'll talk about distribution in just a second. Um, you can use other languages, and then the media library is where you can also import images if you need people to choose between two different things. There's image questions, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty exciting. And then um, now let's go to how we do we send a survey? Send a survey. So you print you print them all out, as many as you are going to send out. <laughs> and, then you, and then you mail them. You lick every envelope. envelope. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm assuming, you know, every once in a while, I'll get like something in the mail that's like, take the survey. Mm -hmm. And it'll send you to a link, which is funny. But... You, oh, you mean it'll ask you to take it online? Yeah. But oh, a, few, a few years ago, I got, I got one from one of the big like uh, TV network ratings things. And they sent... Uh, three dollars cash in the envelope and asked me to take the survey and return it and keep the money if i if i did it i don't know if i didn't do it i guess you send the money back <laughs> i don't know but i had cash in the envelope this is from the biggest like ratings provider in the world oh my god it was crazy i don't know i was like i was trying to do the math i'm like you I don't know, know how many people now, they sent this to it's a like lot of mail, money like people don't get mail it would be like kind of a fun experiment it'd be like mm -hmm. almost like guerrilla marketing now even though before yeah kind of yeah <laughs> how you do surveys yeah it's like it's um, almost like email now it's like this is it, people they don't get mail but if they get it they're gonna be like what the heck you know why did i, know, why I, did I get mail, mail? <laughs> yeah. um but the guys like dan and um our ceo of Vivek and eric our coo um they always talk about how they used to stand on like street corners asking mm -hmm. people for survey questions and in college, when I lived in Portland, we used to have 
a system to avoid the people on the street corners. Where, like, <laughs> nice. We would like four of us would be walking and then we'd all line up behind one person. And so then we'd like, they only thought one person was walking towards them. And then either one person got trapped and three escaped. Or they're not going <laughs> to stop everyone at once. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's definitely is we have moved on to now. We have lots of different ways to distribute surveys. One of those being email. Yes. So if you have an email list for your respondents, if they're employees, customers that have signed up, make sure they've signed up to get emails. Um, you create a list. Let's click on this button list. You upload. I don't know if we want to get into all this now. You import, upload the list. It's just a CSV, Excel. Um, you can then select from here the list of respondents that you want to send it to. So um, if it's like you can call it customers, employees, it can be everybody, whatever it is. I'm sure that when we do internal surveys, you know, there's like different teams that are on these mm -hmm. different lists. So you add them uh, in this too, you select the list um, and then you edit the survey just right here in screen. Um, what I want, what I want to show quickly is these are pretty cool. They, I mean, they're just, it's just text, but what they are, are um, insert the survey link. So I'm going to delete that and add it back. Uh, tracked respondents or anonymous respondents. So if you click the tracked one, It'll put this code in here and then respondents who took who, who started your survey or I think who completed it, they they'll be marked as complete so that if you send like a reminder, they're not going to get the survey. They don't have to get the survey again. Um, right. Anonymous is if you want to protect anonymity, you send the anonymous link. Mm -hmm. um, it's just one link for everybody. So it's these kind of little things are built right into the editor. That's so fun. Um, can you take the survey link and send it through like a HubSpot email? Um, yeah, so that would be the link here. You just grab that. This is the link to your survey. Um, so I'm going to copy that, or I just click it, and it is copied. Um, <laughs> it is the same link. I don't know if it's going to look the same, but it goes to the same place. You can send. Right. You can use this anywhere. Um, you can edit the end of it so that um, you know it can say whatever you want, like you know Pizza Hut or whatever it is. Yeah. If, if you want to. For people of, who like doing um, UTM tracking, etc., that is where you would add that. So you could plug it into a HubSpot button. Or yes, exactly. a force or, you know, some sort of system that you already have going, you can go that way. Now, that does, you lose some of the details there, like the tracking feature. I believe that's all anonymous then because you don't have demographic data. Yes, I think so. I think there's like some technical ways like you can like um, match, the, you could create survey links in question yeah. pro and match it but yeah it's 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 more difficult um, doing it with this in question pro is is kind of a, it's this will track everything right it's also it's kind of like using the share button if you go up to share this is where you can have your qr code if you're let's say you're a restaurant and you want to get feedback you can print the you know you can copy that qr code add it to something that's like posted up in your restaurant where people could add reviews you mm -hmm. can share on linkedin facebook and twitter you can put uh, the QR code on a shirt if you want. Ooh. Like a personal review survey. Anyone sees you, you know. <laughs> How do I look I today? I the next X Day t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Rate me one to 10. Review me here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I won't do that. Um, that is, this is great. And then, of course, if you are really looking for a specific demographic, whether you're on essentials or a paid license, our audience team can find you the most random people with mm -hmm. the smallest criteria. If you want only purple haired people that live in zip code 66608 under the age of 40, mm -hmm. over the age of 18, the audience people will find you. We could find there might only be two of those people, but we'll find them. Yes. <laughs> well, that's my hometown. That's Topeka, Kansas. So I was like, <laughs> oh, so you might know how many people are there. I, I was like trying to think of another zip code besides mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and the only other like phone numbers and addresses I have memorized are from my hometown. Yes, yeah, same, same for me. Actually, it's like it's, everything you memorize as a kid, you just remember forever. So yeah, like in case of emergency, I have to call my dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you want me to go to this audience or, or uh, um, I think, here? yeah, if you go here, it'll take you to the self-service tool. Right. Okay. So this is just a bunch of levers you can pull on the screen to kind of, uh, let me, I think you do it this way. Yes. And um, let me see. It will allow you to kind of target the respondents. Um, there's, I don't know how many uh, different options there are on this particular screen. Um, 
but I'm there's even it. this is my favorite i yes love, mostly because i love buttons well, and this, <laughs> <laughs> right and this updates in real time which i like too so like if you have a budget you know your budget you can just kind of yeah. mix and match these um, but again these are not the only criteria available you can get kind of custom uh oh, I, yeah. I think this might just if you up. and then yeah, it changes is. i think to um contact us yeah. yes if you um, get if it gets too complicated our system won't uh, like won't be able to field it automatically, um, and so you and you can do it against whichever survey, which I think is great. So if you go to survey, Nick, I don't know if you have like some personal surveys in there, but if you drop down, hit that drop down. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can just it pick will any automatically. Um, oh, this one we just made. Yeah. So it knows how long it is, um, or we do. Yeah. Question Pro knows how long it is. <laughs> um, and then it tells you how uh, yeah, number of questions between yeah. 11 and 15. So it'll adjust the correct price accordingly. Um, mm -hmm. And this is your respond, you know, 300 respond. And again, this is if you're purchasing respondents mm -hmm. uh, or, you're, or you're accessing respondents through Question Pro. Yep. And this is just super helpful um, in case you're looking for, you know, specific doctors, lawyers, people with purple hair. Um, yes. <laughs> this definitely is... Um, really, really helpful and available to all license types. Yes. Yeah. That's what's great about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's, it's, it's good to play with and get a sense of how much these things cost as well. If you're doing these oh, types of projects on a regular basis. Yeah, for sure. And really being able to maybe expand your demographic. If you're doing a, like a study, not just your customers, you mm -hmm. know, if you're looking to expand your customer base, mm -hmm. do they want the products that you're offering? Most, if, well, I worked for like three startups, none of us, none of which ever did <laughs> surveying for product market fit. Oh, well, it's too bad. I assumed it was out there. Those startups don't exist anymore. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there is some of that. Um, entrepreneurs sometimes don't like being told that what they're looking for. Like, like yeah, to sometimes do. you don't want to know. You, if it's like there's no demand, you just rather not know. Just let it fail slowly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's bliss. Um, okay, back to the survey. We've got 10 minutes to get this thing distributed and analyzed. That was a weird so word. Analyzed. This is, is this it here? Yeah, this is it. 10 minutes. To, so we can't um, distribute it in 10 minutes. No, but you can do cool. You could do test questions. Test respondents. That's right. And is, is that under analytic? I haven't done that in a while here. Is that um, under... I've only ever seen Kartik do it. Okay. Let me see. Wow. Running test respondents. <laughs> Um, no, I think you go to edit, go back to it under edit. Yeah. It might be under edit. And then go under tools. Man, look at me. I should have had Eric watch this. <laughs> he knew how well I know the platform. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. I haven't done this in a long time. Maybe I'm, my I'm, boss. I, I know the platform better than I thought. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm so confident in my surveys that I don't ever do test respondents, but that's actually <laughs> I've been proven wrong many, many times. So <laughs> this will run 30 test respondents straight through the questionnaire. Um, I, I, I left that logic question in there. I, or I might have cleared the logic out. So I, I, I don't know if that's going to show how that works, but it'll go down those random logic paths yep. um, and then uh, kind of show you what that data looks like. So I only ran 30, but we can still pull up a dashboard for those 30. Oop, looks Ooh. like there's an error on that. Might have had to do, I don't know if I finished setting up that logic or not. Secure the review the report. Oh, I think, I think it'll be fine. I was just going to go to the dashboard. Great. Show us the dashboard. So it and did work. As an essentials user, you get one dashboard that you can customize. So you can customize this dashboard with the logos of your, um, let's say you're running it for a customer that's not you. Um, you can distribute the dashboard in real time, which is very, very cool. So let's say you send out the survey and one person takes it and the, you send out the link to your boss and you're like, look, one person took our survey. By the time your boss clicks on the link, 10 people could have taken your survey and hope that same link will still work, which mm -hmm. I think is one of the best features of question. Yes, <laughs> yeah, real-time reporting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, as somebody has to update reports into Excel or Google Docs, this is, this is better. <laughs> yes, totally. Yeah, and real-time, exactly. These were tests, so it says unknown, but it'll tell you if it's they're in the real respondents, it'll tell you which country they came from. Mm -hmm. um, it'll highlight this map uh, accordingly. And um, these are the question uh, answers. So um, it will put most of these in like the in the correct kind of um, graphical format based on the question type. Sometimes you want to take a look. You might want to see, you know, I might want to see this as a, as a column instead of a pie. Um, 
So it's easy to switch just right here. You don't have to open up the whole settings, go into the thing, you just change it right here. Um, that's one of the other things I love about Question Pro I didn't mention before is that getting these dashboards to look good in Question Pro is much faster than on any other platform I've used. Um, they all kind of have a lot of functionality around this, but uh, it's if, if it takes, like I said, if you have like 30 questions and you have to kind of change each one a little bit, that adds up. You know, if you have to like go into every one, wait for it to load, you know, click refresh, click apply. Um, this is why we have a lot of this. The stuff that people click on often is built in right to the dash, right to the front front of the dashboard. Um, so these are your answers uh, because they were random uh, or test respondents. Everything kind of ended up looking, you know, these are all bars are <laughs> looking close really together. nice. Like <laughs> yeah. very even. Exactly. <laughs> Let me um, see. It. We have one really, really good question that said um, if we distribute the survey in different languages, can we download the responses in our preferred language? That's a good question. You mean like the test respondents or the or, or the uh, open-ended responses or the actual questions themselves? The actual questions, like does the dashboard translate to English if you distributed the mm -hmm. survey in French? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at that, I was like, I'm going to phone uh, a friend. I, I got to phone a friend on that one. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I'll, I'll um... um, I know I have um, Veronica's um information so we will definitely be following them mm -hmm. up on that for sure because these are some good ones uh we need to you know another episode we might do is like can you stump us episodes because some of them get uh, us don't invite me to that, that that'll be that'll be tough <laughs> <laughs> you're like i'm only confident in designing sir <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah, no, I'll get stumped because like I said, I mean, in all seriousness, there's so much like, look at all these, there's so much in here that I have not used that I'll, I'll definitely be stumped quickly. So <laughs> I'm trying to see, um, I did not, I didn't apply the translation. Actually, I just showed, I didn't actually apply it. So yeah. I don't know if maybe something shows up here. If you do, it might. For sure. I will. Um, sometimes I have to like do a punt to Adrian Mendez and be like, hello, Adrian, please help me. We should just do a punt to Adrian office hours. <laughs> right. Just like Adrian Mendez, save us. Um, he also watches this. So, you know, <laughs> I'll be like, Adrian, I need this. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you can download. This is really the dashboard where, you know, a lot of things happen. You can select different blocks to highlight. You can download different individual questions. And there is a option that I don't think people use very much where you can download your report, download the dashboard as a PowerPoint. It's a PowerPoint. See, I don't think I've done that, but I've seen that. So it's yeah. right here, PowerPoint, PDF, Excel, Microsoft Word. And it looks, I'm pretty sure if, I don't, if I'm correct, in a PowerPoint, each one of these is one slide, right? Yes. And then you can okay. like, you can also import PowerPoint uh, layouts and branding. Oh, that's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so that it, like exports almost instantly for mm -hmm. a presentation. Yeah, awesome. Which is pretty Just fun. more branding stuff. Is branding <laughs> important? I can't remember. <laughs> I'm sorry. As a market, as the marketing person, <laughs> I you notice how I know, know all the marketing things about our tool. <laughs> you, well, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot though. That's why. That's I mean, it's enough <laughs> to keep you busy without even knowing all like this stuff. Oh. I've used most of this, but to, to train somebody on that, it's probably a punt to Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe not available on essentials. So sticking to essentials, True, yes. that is why right. we're here, is you know making sure that you understand the most you can get out of the sim of our most robust but simple platform is Question Pro Essentials. Okay, last, if you know, you know, Question Pro hack. Nick, what's your favorite one? Oh, what's my favorite one? Oh, question pro hack. If you know, you know. Yes, so let me think here. <laughs> to Nick's credit, this is his first office hour, so he's not mm. uh <laughs> No, but I I know I know uh I know I gotta think so you're you're asking me about the platform itself. What's yeah. what's my favorite yeah. hack? I'm trying to think of something that's unique to Question Pro um okay. that I haven't seen elsewhere. Um I, I would say, so some of the, the way that the questions, so we've done some work. I don't know if we've shown this in office hours yet, but with the way that the questions uh, appear to respondents um, with kind of a focus mode, have, have you demonstrated Ooh, that no, at all? No, we have not this? done that yet. So I'm, I'm pretty, now I, I bring that up and I have to know if I remember how to do it. Here it is, focus mode. So 
this is like a, a tried and true way to, it's just one button, click one button. I think it optimizes the survey like tenfold for respond. We were talking about respondent fatigue earlier. Mm -hmm. um, what, what I like about this is I've seen like other platforms have this kind of thing, but there's still like a lot of toggles you got to mess with. This is like the one click like brings you to this optimized view. So um, this shows the respondent one question at a time. When they click their answer, it pushes them onto the next screen. Um, they're looking at one thing at one time. Answer. Just think about this one question and give us your one answer. That's what we want you to do. Um, so that's something new that I haven't seen on other platforms. It, it's not this easy. Uh, that kind of mode is like known to be, it improves data quality, but um, I just really like the way this came about at Question Pro. So, I mean, that's, I call that like a definite hack. Um, I have to think about it. I'll, I'll get back to you. I might, I might publish something about this now that you say, because a lot Ooh. of things come to mind. Um, you know, hopefully this won't be Nick's last time at Question Pro office hours. We have lots of, I have 12 of these I have to do. So <laughs> we have lots coming up in the future. Um, and I'm sure we'll do maybe an Insights Hub one. Um, yes, I could talk about that. That'll have to be two or three hours long. Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> an hour, to be honest, an hour is about max. <laughs> Even for me, I get distracted. Sometimes there was like one time with Adrian, I was like, not bored, but I literally, he was like talking about something and I just started doing something else in my head halfway through. <laughs> you just need more Starbucks. <laughs> that's, that's true. Probably. I do have some water, but, um, a good Starbucks never hurt anyone. Okay. Team. Thank you so much for, uh, joining us. I took your screen away for question pro office hours. Uh, Nick Freiling, sorry. Oh, this side is the director of Insights Hub here at Question Pro, and he can answer any of your questions about Insights Hub and some of your medium questions about essentials. Yes, <laughs> medium. <laughs> and we are so glad that you guys joined us. If you have any questions, please just you know hit us up on our live chat on our website or at sales at questionpro.com, and someone will definitely get back to you. And if you need to find either of us, you can find us on LinkedIn tw and Twitter. And we are, I know Nick's super active on all those platforms and I am mediumly active. And so, you know, make sure you find us like share and comment, and we will see you next month. Let me look at the date on February 27th for question pro office hours, where we talk about advanced. Awesome. Awesome. Have a good day. Bye, Nick. See you later.